Well, hello, my name is Andy Tidy and welcome back to another edition of Canal Hunter. We're now in series five and we are following an almost constructed line of canal that would have involved the construction of two inclined planes. Those planes were never actually built, but we've followed the route using the abandoned canals to connect the dots, so to speak. Well, in the last episode, we emerged onto the new main line via the Dunkirk branch and we left our boat moored outside cottage number three in district two. Our destination for this load of coal is the pump house at Titford. But from here on the new main line, we are rather spoilt for choice in terms of the routes ahead. By a strange turn of coincidences, the position between the new main line and the old main line is the same as between the Warsaw level and the levels above in so much as there are five different routes to choose from. Well, to the north, there is the factory locks in Tipton. Then there is the Tipton Green Canal, which we looked at briefly last week. There is the Gower branch directly opposite us with the Braids locks at the far end. And if we turn around to the south, we've got the Spon Lane locks, which are the original Brindley built chambers, or a little bit further on, if we wanted to take the long route, there are the three at Smethwick. Well, the most direct route is to use the Spon Lane Locks. But I'm having a spot of bother with starting my Bollander engine. You can hear it thumping away at the beginning and the end of every episode of Canal Hunter. The problem I'm having is with the blowtorch that we use to heat up the hot bulb. The hot bulb is like a lump of metal that we heat with a blowtorch and it's kind of a, a primitive glow plug. But the problem is, the blowtorch isn't working. Well, the lads up at the boatyard on the Albury Loop tell me they've got a spare one in the office. So if I like to take the boat up there this morning, when I've got it started, we can pop in there and they'll swap it over for me. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, if we're gonna go to Albury, that means we're gonna use the Gower branch and we're gonna use the Braids locks. And that means that we're going to go through the only remaining set of staircase locks on the BCN. There used to be three sets of staircase locks on the BCN. I'll give you one point if you can come up with the second set, and I'll give you five points if you can come up with the third. Tricky one, that. Now, when I mentioned that we're going to a boatyard in Albury, I suspect those of you who know the BCN will think I'm heading for Valencia Wharf, that fan of basins which occupied the uh, old mainline canal opposite the southern entrance to the Albury Loop. Well, I'm not. I'm going to go into the Albury Loop and I'm going to pick up the boatyard around by West Bromwich Road. And in the best traditions of Canal Hunter, I'm going to take you there using a photo stream.
Well, the guys have told me that it's going to take about two hours to fix this engine. And that gives me a chance to go around and have a cup of tea and catch up with my friends the Shores. The Shores moved up here into the black country in about 1900 and soon after they moved up they had their son and they live in one of the canal side cottages. I don't often get a chance to stop and say hello but this provides a perfect opportunity and it's not often you get to put a name to someone who lives in one of these canal side houses. Well anyhow, with the engine fixed, we really do need to get ahead now if we're going to get this coal delivered up to the pump house by the afternoon. So I'm going to carry on with the photo stream around the Oldbury Loop and get ourselves back out onto the old main line. Now, Albury has got a really rich industrial history, and a lot of it can be found on the fantastic Made in Albury website. But a lot of its activity circled around the chemical industry, and it really dominated the landscape and the atmosphere. This is an industry which was dominated by the manufacture of phosphorus, an active ingredient in incendiary devices, and therefore it's a key in component in the munitions industry. It was horribly toxic stuff and it had a devastating impact on the health of the people who worked with it. The bones just melted away and a local condition known as fossil jaw blighted many lives of the people around here. The centre of the manufacture of this phosphorus was in an area bounded by the chemical arm which we're coming to and the Jim Crow arm which branches off the Titford locks and the archive photos reveal the vast quantities of white phosphorus pollution which was left to leach into the canal. As this industry drew to a close in the middle of the 20th century, it offered Charles Matty one final commercial BCN cargo. This was the transportation of the phosphorus waste from the site, and it was taken to sit tips and settling ponds and its final resting place was the old rattle chain brickworks, now known as the Rattle Chain Lagoon. We now turn into the Titford Canal and we pass the basin that used to be used by Thomas Clayton Albury Limited. 
and they centred their business on the delivery trade for the chemical industry. They were bang next door to the main site for the Midland tar distillers. And that itself was another source of pollution. Even today, if you take your boat up to the bottom of the uh, Albury Locks and you put your boat in reverse and start to stir up the sediment, wafts of chemical smells will absolutely envelop you. In some ways it's reminiscent of that clear amber soap, that uh, smell of coal tar that our grandparents used to use. Right beside the bottom lock, that's lock six of the Albury flight, better known as the Crow, you're going to find, well kind of find, BCN cottage number 180. When I say kind of find, the cottage is there, but not as the last BCN owner used to know it. Back in the days of Mr Heritage, it was a more humble affair. But when the new owner bought it, he decided it needed upgrading. So he literally took it down brick by brick and then reconstructed it in a new format. So the bricks are all there and it sits on the same site. But it's not really cottage 180. Right footprint, right bricks, wrong house. Well, it's on up the crow with us to the pump house at the very top. And it's here that the pumps were used to lift the water from the Wolverhampton level up to this very top level at Titford. And not only did it feed the locks, it also fed back into the Titford Pools Reservoir. And they were used initially to fill the old Brindley Summit below and then later on the water was diverted down to the Rotten Park Reservoir, a water course that still exists. Well, now we've reached the pump house, the coal has got to be unloaded by hand. There's no grabs up here like there was down at Ocker Hill. And this is going to take a couple of hours. But I've, and I've persuaded the lads to do it themselves. So while they're doing this, I thought you might like to have a look at the other canals that radiate out off this high 511 foot level. For starters, there is the Tack Bank branch and it goes around the back of the pump house. It's part navigable canal and it's part feeder. It started out as a feeder for Brindley's original 491 foot summit at Smethwick, but then it was partly open for navigation. The navigation never proved to be a great success and in the 1950s it was closed down and it reverted to its original purpose of feeder for the BCN. Let's go south a bit past the Langley Maltings and then we're going to arrive at Titford Pools. And we've got another choice of arms to explore. Now these remote sections of the BCN clearly never attracted a lot of photographers because the archive photos are very few and far between. That said, there are quite a number of images from Britain from above and there is enough for us to string together a reasonable photo stream.
Straight ahead, there's the Causeway Green Branch. And that led out for maybe half a mile to collieries. But if I go to the right, we'll enter into the Tipford Pools themselves, and then we can continue on to the Portway Branch, which sits high on an exposed saddle of land under Portway Hill. Now I have to admit that I have a really soft spot for the Portway branch. It sits up very, very high and there are very few photographs of it. In fact, there's only one that I know of from ground level. And that reveals this weedy canal going across this upland area of barrenness. Amazingly evocative. And if that wasn't enough, every morning when I draw back the curtains from our bedroom, I look out across the black country and I see Portway Hill in the far distance. And I judge the conditions of the weather for the day by how well I can see this old stretch of canal. So, thumbs up for the Portway branch. Well, that's the end of the incline plane route. And in effect, it's the end of series five. But that said, there is still one more thing I want to explore before we move on to Pastures New, or possibly return to Series 4. Truth is not a place, it's a thing. You remember how I kind of skirted around the subject of inclined planes and said, uh, there's quite a lot of complicated history there and maybe we'll return to that at the end. Well, they are a much underappreciated element of our inland waterways heritage. And so for my next episode, which I'm going to round off series five with, I'm going to take a look at the evolution of the British Canal inclined planes, from their inception in the area around Ironbridge to their conclusion in the fields of Leicestershire. But that's all for the next episode. So for now, it's goodbye, happy hunting, and I'll see you soon. Cheerio.